What's up, Coder Byte? Welcome back to another Data Structures and Algorithms video. I'm Elizabeth, and today we are going to be tackling a binary search tree problem. This is a problem that it, there's a little trick to. If you know the trick, it's relatively simple. And if you don't know the trick, I'm going to teach it to you. Let's get into it. All right, this week's problem. It's called the kth smallest tree node. The question is, Given the root of a binary search tree and an integer k, return the kth smallest value, one indexed, of all of the values of the nodes in the tree. So here is an example. We have a binary search tree, and we're going to go over what a binary search tree is. And we are looking for the kth smallest number in the tree. So we get a k equal to 3. So that means out of all of these numbers, counting in an ascending order, what is the kth smallest node? So the answer is six, because two is the smallest, three is the second to smallest, and six is the third to smallest. So let's get into what a binary search tree is if you don't know or you need a little refresher. So what is a binary search tree? A binary search tree, or BST, is a tree with the value of each tree node being greater than all of the values in the node's left subtree and less than the ones in its right subtree. So again, here is our example, and you can see that when we look at 10, every node in its left subtree is less than 10, and every node in its right subtree, subtree is 11. And then if we look at 6, the same is true. If we look at 3, the same is true, et cetera, et cetera. So let's talk a little bit about a little bit about traversals and how to traverse binary search trees. There are a few different approaches and we're going to go over all of them. So again, there are a few different ways we can go about traversing a BST. So here is our example. The first way to traverse a binary search tree is breadth first search. This starts at the tree node root and explores all of the nodes at the present depth prior to moving on to the nodes at the next depth level. So let's look at what that looks like. Here we have our example, and there are four levels. 10 is in one, 6 and 11 are in the second, 3 and 7 are in the third, and 2 is in the fourth. So to do a breadth first search on this tree, first we look at 10, then we look at 6 and 11, then we look at 3 and 7, and finally we would look at 2. Our next traversal method is called depth first search, with, which starts at the root node and explores as far as possible along each branch before backtracking. There are a few different orderings for how we track the nodes we visited for DFS. So looking at this tree, if we're looking at, if we're going down each branch before we go down any of the other branches, there are a few different ways that we can do this. So we're going to talk about the different ways that we can do this. The first is called pre-order which is where we drill down each branch, processing each parent node before its children. So let's look at what that looks like. So here we have, we're starting at 10, we'll always start at the root node. And then we look at six. We process six, then we process its children. So we process three, and then we process its children. So we process two. We backtrack back up, right? So we go from two back to three, back to six, and then we continue to traverse its right children. So seven has no children, so we backtrack six to 10, and finally we get to 11. So this is called pre-order. Post-order is where we drill down each branch, only processing a node after we visited its children. So in this case, instead of continuing down the branch, you'll see what happens. So we start at 10 and we do not process it. We visit it, but we do not process it. Um, because we only process a node after we visited its children. So then we visit six. Now six has children, so we do not process it. Then we go to three. Three has children, so we do not process it. And finally we get to two, which has no children, so we process it. We backtrack back up and we process three because we've processed all its children. We backtrack back up to six and we continue to visit all of its children. So we're still not visiting six because we haven't visited all of its children yet. We process seven, we backtrack up, we process six because we visited all of its children. We move back up to 10 and we continue to process the rest of its children. So we visit 11, we process 11, and then only then do we process 10. So this is called post order. And finally, we have in order where we drill down each branch branch processing all a node's left children, then itself, then all of its right children. And this ordering will give us the nodes in ascending order. So let's watch that happen. 
So we start at 10, we visit it, we do not process it because we haven't processed all of its left children. We then visit six, we do not process it, we continue to visit its left children. We process, we visit three, again, we process, we visit two, and then finally this node has no left children, so we process it. Three, we've processed all of its left children, so we process it. Now we would visit all of its right children, but it doesn't have any right children. So we back we backtrack back up to six and we process it because we visited all of its left children. We then go down to seven, we visit it, we process it, then we process 10 because we have processed all of its left subtree. Then we visit 11, we process 11. So these are just some ways to do depth first search. It's a little bit of a memorization thing um, just to kind of memorize what the orderings are and how you go about doing these. But in terms of the code for each of these, they only differ slightly. So what is our approach to our problem? So our approach is going to be using depth first search. Why are we doing depth first search? Why are we doing depth first search in order? Because if we do depth first search in order, remember, we will get all the nodes in ascending order. So we can take advantage of in order depth first search to visit and store the nodes in order of ascending order. Then we can easily take the kth node from that list in order of in order nodes. So let's watch that happen again. And remember to do an in order depth first search, we drill down each branch, processing all a node's left children, then itself, then all of its right children. So we visit 10, we visit 6, we visit 3, we visit 2. At this point, 2 has no left children, so we process it. So there is our the beginning of our in-order traversal. We then go back up to 3, we process it, and it has no right children. So we go back to 6, it finally gets processed, we've processed all of its left children. Then we go to 7. 7 gets processed because it has no left children. 10 gets processed because we finished processing all of its left children. And finally, we visit 11 and process that because it has no left children. So relatively simple. Let's watch this in action. All right, so as per usual, I'm in Visual Studio Code and we are going to work on this problem together. So the first first thing we're going to do is define our node class, which is going to represent all of our nodes in our binary tree. So the first thing we'll do is we will set up a class of node. It will get a val, a left and a right. Oh, no, we're putting that in the constructor. My bad. OK, constructor. And we get a val left and a right, and we will set those. This dot val equals val, this dot left equals left, and this dot right equals right. And now I'm just going to build our tree uh, example that we had in our slides. So we're going to say let root equals new node. We're going to say 10. Root dot left is going to be a new node, which is 6. Root dot right is going to be a new node which is 11, root dot left dot left is a new node uh, three, root dot left dot right is a new node uh, seven, and root dot left dot left dot left is a new node two. So that should uh, represent the same tree that we had in the slides. So let's write our um, our code for this. So our first function is going to be, I think I'll call it k smallest uh, node, right? And it's going to take a root and a k. So that this is the root we are traversing, and this is the k that we are looking for. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to define a function that just does an in order depth first search, and I'm going to call it in this function. So I'm going to say let in order equals dfs in order on the root and after we get that we can just return in order k and minus one because this is going to be index zero and remember this is indexed one as described in the problem so let's just write our comment block that we're going to take a root which is a node and this is going to be the node to begin our traversal and then k, which is in int, and this is the node we are looking for. 
uh, a function to find the k smallest node, and we are going to return an int, which is the k smallest node. Okay, that makes sense. And now let's define our function. Uh, what did we call it? DFS in order. And that's going to take a root to traverse. And let's define our, let's make our comment block. So this is going to be a node. And this is the node to start our traversal. Uh, it is going to return uh, an array of the in order traversed nodes. And this is a function to, to traverse a BST uh, in order DFS. Okay, so now we're going to do our traversal. So if you remember the definition of DFS in order, we are going to go through our tree nodes and we are going to process all of a tree nodes left nodes. After we've processed its left nodes, its left children, we will process it, the parent, and then only then we will move on to its right subchildren. So this is actually a relatively easy algorithm. It's recursive, so we will definitely walk through the recursion after this in the slides. But it's basically just, this is going to be what we return, right? This is going to be the order in which we have traversed our nodes. And then I'm going to find define a function called traverse, which we will then call recursively. This is going to get a node. And we are just going to um, traverse the left children if there is one. So we're going to say if node.left, we are going to recursively call traverse on node.left. And then we are going to ret.push um, node.val. So after we have traversed all of the left children, we are finally going to push that value to our return. And then we are going to traverse its right children. Very simple. Very, very simple algorithm. And to kick us off, we are going to call traverse on root. Now, the reason why we're using this helper function for our recursion is so we can maintain this ret and continue to push into that red. So I hope that makes some sense. Let's see if this all works. Again, very simple algorithm for you guys today. So we're going to call um, console.log case smallest root, and then we're going to pass in the third smallest, and we're expecting six. So let's see what we get here. We get undefined. So why is that? Uh, no, we're traversing red. Uh, let in order. So let's see what in order is. Oh, I think I'm not. Okay, node k smallest tree node. Okay, so we do get what we wanted. And you can see that we have traversed this tree in ascending order. We have 2, 3, 6, 7, 10, and 11. So very simple algorithm. We're going to walk through the recursion of this traversal. And that's it for today. Okay, so I think the thing that people struggle with with any sort of traversal of a binary search tree is the recursive aspect of it. So I'm going to visualize the call stack and what's happening in that recursion, and hopefully that makes things a little clearer for you. So here is our depth first search in order traversal call stack. So here we have our example on the right. The first thing we put into the call stack is our original function call, where we call DFS in order on the root node, which is 10. This then calls traverse on 10. If you remember with our code, that is how we kind of set off our recursive traverse calls. So this is actually visiting 10, but we have not yet processed it, meaning pushed it to our return array. Now, once we visit 10, what's going to happen? We are going to recursively call traverse on all of its left children. So this function call kicks off a call to six. And we do the same thing. We visit six. This kicks off a call to three, which is its left child. This, you know, makes us visit three. And then finally, this kicks off a uh, traverse function call with two. Now, two does not have any more left children. So 
right in our in our um, code where we check if no dot left traverse does not run. So what runs? We push to to our return array, aka we process it. So we process to this adds to to our um, return array. And then the next line is if no dot right, we process the right children. It doesn't have any right children. So two pops off the stack. We then go back to three. Now three, we've already processed its left children. So what do we do? We are going to process it and we are going to add it to our return array. So that gets popped off the stack. We return to six and our next line after those uh, recursive calls for its left subchildren is to process it and put it into our return array. So we do just that. And after that, we now process its right children. So traverse six kicks off another traverse call with seven. So what do we do? Um, seven has no left children. So we visit it, we process it. So we add that to our array. We then pop it off the stack. It has no children and we are back to our uh, traverse six call. Now we've done all of our logic. So it returns, that gets popped off the stack. We're finally back at 10. So what do we do? We've processed all of its left sub children. So we now push it to our return array because we process the parent. So that gets pushed to our return array. And the next call in our traverse 10 will be to traverse its right children. So we add another call to our call stack, which is traverse 11. We visit it. It has no left children, so we just add it to our return array. And then it has no right children, so we pop it off the stack. And finally, we are done with our traverse 10. So that gets popped off, popped off the stack. And we have finished our traversal and our DFS in order 10 can finally return our return array and then it gets popped off the stack. So again, I know the recursive aspect of this is the toughest part of this question. So I hope this kind of helped explain what's going on there. Finally, let's talk about the big O of this function. So this function implementation has a big O of O of N, where N is the number of nodes in the tree. So why is that? Ultimately, we still have to visit every node once. So we can't get it down. A lot of search algorithms with binary search trees will give you an O of log N because we can half each amount of nodes that we're looking through based on whether they are less than or greater than the root, the node that we are looking at. But in this case, we do have to traverse the entire tree. So it is a big O of N. So this was a shorter video for you guys this week. I hope you enjoyed. Binary search trees are a huge topic in interview questions. So yeah. Brush up on all of your skills and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.